Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Peggle. So once again, we gotta get that rabbit. It's a freaking rabbit, man. Even when you play as Warren, he's pretty hit or miss. It ain't no spooky ball, I'll tell you that. But nevertheless, I thought it would be the best plan to fight Rabbit with Rabbit. And so far, it is not working whatsoever. You know, well, I'll tell you some burrito horn stories from back in the day. So, a long time ago, we used to have this manager, we'll call her Miss Frowny Pants. So, Miss Frowny Pants. Wait. Wow, I got my ass kicked. Anyway, Miss Frowny Pants, she earns that name because it seemed like more often than not, she was in a bad mood. Well, maybe that's a little too strong. I wouldn't call it a bad mood. She was just... She looked burnt out all the time. Looked like she didn't want to be there. She was always moaning and groaning. You know, that sort of thing. And... Thankfully, unlike Mr. Pretzel, he didn't. she didn't take it out on the employees. Well, most of the time. But she just kind of brought the mood of the whole restaurant down. So she'd be cleaning something, and she'd be like, Oh, man, I gotta clean it. Yeah. You know, always moaning. But when it came to me in particular, sometimes it would just be me and her closing the restaurant. And I'd be doing dishes, and she'd come up to me and she'd be like, So, like... Are you going to be done anytime soon? Now, I've had people ask me, you know, hey, Matt, what's your ETA on this task? You know, people ask me that sometimes. So they can determine when they need to start doing stuff. But this wasn't that. She was just being rude. And every five, every five to ten minutes, she'd be like, so you gonna be done with those dishes soon? Like, can you hurry up? And one time, I was doing the dishes, and I look over, and this woman is just full-blown staring me down. Just drilling holes into my head. Now, a few videos ago, I said I like doing dishes, and I like taking garbage out, because it's relaxing. Well, I want to clarify a little bit. I meant it's relaxing compared to other things you could be doing. Like you could be taking orders, dealing with customers, you could be making food. Now, I've actually never made food. I have not been trained on the assembly line, just on service. So there's technically worse tasks you could be doing. But cleaning, like, you just worry about yourself. Now that being said, I'm not taking some Sunday stroll. Like, when I do those dishes, I go ham. Like, my arms are flailing, there's suds flying everywhere, I get all soaked, like... I'd say, at maximum, I spend about 15 seconds on a single pan cleaning it. Because the way the sink works, it's split into three sections. You get the left side, which is like a miniature hot tub. There's jets that move the water around. So unless the pan is really dirty, the friction and the soap just takes care of it. And all you gotta do is spray it. Then there's the middle sink. You're supposed to fill it with water, but I've never seen it filled ever. So I guess we don't do that. And then the very right sink is sanitized water. So you dip it in there for a little bit, and then you take it out and you let it dry. So, when I'm cleaning, I'm going Mach 2, because I know everyone wants to get out of the restaurant. So like I said, I'm rapid fire slinging pans in the suds, and the whole time, like every five minutes, 
So like, like when can we go home? It's so, like when can we go? Now this one particular night, it was bad. Now, I gotta tell you something about our morning crew. I don't know what's going on with the morning crew, but they don't work. Simply put, they come to work, but they don't really work. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, they ain't working. They're hardly working. They're not working hard. Because... 95% of the time, without fail, me, Mr. Cheez-It, Mimosa, and other members of the night crew that I'll introduce later, we walk in, it's trash city in the back of the restaurant, there's lots of dirty dishes, and just in general, it's not that great. Now, I'm not going to complain about it, it is what it is. But still, you could try at least a little bit. On this one particular night, they must have just quit because it was extra bad. There was lots of dishes. And I couldn't start on the dishes right away because I also had garbage, had to clean the floors, had to clean the lobby. So I didn't get started on the dishes until about halfway through my shift. And it is no exaggeration when I tell you that just about every just about every pan in that restaurant was filthy. Now, sadly, Burrito Horn is getting rid of breakfast all across the land. No more breakfast quesadillas. <clears throat> That's how sad that news is. It's making my phlegm act up. There's no more breakfast quesadillas. There's no more breakfast burritos. We still have the Cinnabons. We still got those. But back when we did have breakfast, and I've said this before, but an egg pan is the worst thing you can find. If you have a dirty egg pan, you gotta clean that right away, because if you don't, those eggs will stick, and they ain't coming off for shit. And Mimosa seemed to find the most egg pans. And you would know if she found it, because she would scream it. You'd hear from halfway across the restaurant, THERE'S AN EGG PAN IN HERE! Oh. But yeah, you, she would let you know if she found it. Anyway. This time, I found said egg pan. And of course, I kept the tradition alive, and I yelled out there was an egg pan. Because at first it was genuine, but then it sort of became like an inside joke among the night crew. If you found an egg pan, you had to scream that there was an egg pan. It's like when you use a pair of tongs and you click them. You have to scream egg pan. Anyway. So I find this egg pan. I'm like, oh, no. So after I do my little screaming ritual, I get some bun water and I fill it up. And this thing sat in the bun water for a good half hour. And even the bun water was like, nah, bro, I ain't doing this. Because the eggs were loosened, but they still weren't really coming off. Now we have these flathead scrapers that you're supposed to use to scrape out the assembly line at the end of the day. I take one of those and I start, like, scraping it off the side of the pan. After about five minutes, it finally comes off. That thing had to stay in the sink for a while. Man, I just cannot catch a break today. So, nighttime, well I guess it already was nighttime, but very late night rolls around. And it's just me and who else? Miss Frowny Pants. So, it's me and her, and I'm slinging the dishes, going Mach 2, going as fast as I can. And, you know, like clockwork, every five, ten minutes. So, like, do you know when you're gonna be, do you know when you're gonna be done so we can go home? And I tell her, like, you know, I'm going as fast as I can, I'll be done pretty soon here. So I give her a time, I give her 30 minutes. Well, 30 minutes goes by, and I wasn't quite done, I had a little bit more dishes to go. 
and she starts getting real irritated. She starts getting real mad. She's like, come on, I've been here for hours. I want to go home. Can you hurry it up? And in my mind, I'm like, well, how about you grab a sponge and join me? But, you know, she's my supervisor, so I obviously didn't say that. So I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. It's a lot of dishes. I'm going to go as fast as I can. It's like, huh, whatever. So finally I get done with the dishes. So after you're done with the dishes, you squeeze the floor, because obviously it's going to get wet. And then all you got to do is not take out the garbage, but any garbages that are full, you just move the bags to the back, you organize them, and then you get out. So literally I got like two minutes left, and... I'm taking the last of the garbage to the back of the restaurant. And Miss Frowny Pants is like, Man, this happens every single night. Y'all so slow. I've been here for hours. I'm done with this. Like, just starts complaining. But, you know, like I said, I didn't say anything because she was my supervisor. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm sorry about that. I'm all done now. We can go home. It's like, well, it's about damn time. So yeah, that was, that was something. But then, something happened. A little something I like to call karma. So that whole time, she was staring me down and giving me crap. She had drawers. Now what do I mean by that? Let me explain. So, whoever is signed into the register... You have to count the money at the end of your shift. So after your shift is over, or I guess a little before it's over, you take the drawer out of the register, you count how much money is in there, you put it in a little machine that we have behind the counter, and you do a cashier report. And at this stage of my employment, I was strictly for cleaning. I wasn't doing service yet. So Miss Frowny Pants was the one doing service. So, she's like, oh, about damn time. Let's get out of here. And we're walking past the register, and I see her looking at the screen. And she starts going, no, no, you got to be kidding me. Apparently, she was still signed in, and she didn't count any of the money. So, yeah, this whole time she was watching me do the dishes, she wasn't even doing her own job. And now she's fuming. She's madder than ever. And this lady had the chutzpah to make this comment. She's like, man, if y'all could have been a little faster, I could have done this by now. What's wrong with you? At this point, I just kind of found it more funny than anything. Because it was her own fault that she's in this situation. So honestly, I'm just trying not to laugh at this point because I know that's going to make her mad. And I swear, I was watching her. She was counting the money, like, going through piles of ones and putting it on the counter. And I swear, between every dollar bill, she let out this little grunt. She's like... <sighs> like, she was so mad. But yeah, thankfully, she was there for a few more months. And then what happened was... She put in her two weeks... But during her last two weeks, she only showed up for three of her shifts. So Mimosa came up and like, yeah, you're done, get out. And also, apparently I found out through Mimosa that Miss Frowny Pants would talk smack behind people's back. Like she would say stuff like, you know, so-and-so, they are so bad at their job, like why do they even work here? So she was one of those people. Which is not good. Don't do that. Don't be talking smack unless the person's there. And also, one time... I was not here for this. I got told. I got told of it. She went on break. And she fell asleep in one of the booths. And I guess no one saw that she was in the lobby. They assumed she left. So they called Mimosa on her day off... 
like, hey, uh, Miss Frowny Pants is gone. Can you come in, please? So, she, reluctantly, she comes in. And she sees Miss Frowny Pants taking a nap in the booth. She wakes up and she says, Oh, thank God you're here. I'm going to go home now. Not, thank you for coming in. Not, I'm sorry I fell asleep. Not, this won't happen again. I'm so sorry. No, just, oh, you're here. Bye. Well, that's just rude. I don't care how you slice that. That's, that's messed up. Now, there was one time, this was the most stressful shift I have ever worked. So at Burrito Horn, you have to wear non-slip shoes, because obviously the floor is greasy. And if you try to wear regular shoes, that floor basically becomes a bowling alley, and you're going to slip and slide all over the place. Now, my work shoes and my regular shoes look very similar, and... This one night, I wasn't even in a hurry. I think I genuinely just grabbed the wrong pair of shoes. Grabbed some shoes, put them on, went to work. And I get to work. And I look down at my feet. And it ain't my work shoes. Now, I have Vans. That's typically what I wear when I'm not working. I'm like, oh no. And Miss Frowny Pants is working that night. I'm like, she's definitely going to say something about it. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, do I bite the bullet and lose 30 minutes of my pay to run home, change, and go back? I thought about it for a minute. I'm like, you know what? YOLO, I'm winging it. So I walk into work. The second I get in the back of the restaurant, it's hard like walking on ice. Now, usually at work, I'm pretty talkative. Like, I'll ask people how their day is going. I'll, if we're not that busy, I'll just talk about bullshit. But on this day, I was stressed out because I'm trying not to bust my ass. I'm grabbing onto everything I can, trying to walk real slow. And Miss Frowny Pants picks up on the change in energy. And she's like, oh, you, you good, Matt? You good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Uh-huh. And she looks down, she's like, oh, you got some new shoes. You know, when'd you get those? And I'm like, crap, she's on to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got these a couple weeks ago. I want to try them. I don't think she ever found out they were not slip. So I think I got away with that one. But like every 15 minutes... She's like, oh, you real quiet. Like, you good today? At first, it was endearing, but then I think at some point, she just started messing with me. And let me tell you, every single movement... Now, thankfully, I did not fall. I slid, but I did not potato sack. So I'm grabbing out of the rack, I'm grabbing out of the wall, I'm grabbing out of everything there is to grab on. I've grabbed pretty much everything in that restaurant. Going two miles an hour. Now, thankfully, it was one of my shorter shifts, so I wasn't there for too long. Now, the last memory I have of Miss Frowny Pants, I think she was faking it, but you guys can let me know. So it's me, it's Mimosa, and it's Miss Frowny Pants. And I'm all the way in the back doing dishes. Again, going pretty fast. And all the way from the lobby bathroom, I hear... And I keep hearing that for like 10 minutes straight. Just the loudest gagging I've ever heard. It sounds like Miss Frowny Pants brought a megaphone in the bathroom and then started doing that. So, she does that for about 10 minutes, she gets out of the bathroom and she goes, I don't feel good, I'm going home. Walks out, and just leaves, just walks out the door. So, now it's just me and Mimosa, 
and she's trying to call everybody, like, Mr. Cheez-It, you know, everybody, can you please come in and help, and crickets, no one comes in to help. So, not only did she have to take the orders, she had to make them as well. So, she had to do both, because I wasn't trained yet. And that night was kind of bad. I felt bad for Mimosa on that night. Now, the reason I think Miss Friday Pants was faking it is because it just seemed like she way overdid it. Like, it, it wasn't gagging. Like, she was almost, like, scream gagging, if that makes any sense. Like, it was way too loud. Again, I can't say that with 100% certainty. You know, it could have been real. But I've thrown up, I've seen people throw up, and they do gag like it is pretty loud. I have never heard anyone gag that loud when puking. So I firmly believe it was a ploy. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. She is gone from the premises. And I've completed the challenges. Alright, what's next here? Uh, we'll get into that next time. So, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Everybody, just do me a favor. Have a great day.